I'm sure at some point, um, especially if you've worked in the terminal for a good amount of time, you know about environment variables and just regular variables. We're not going to be getting into the scripting variables just quite yet, but I wanted to explain the differences between what we call a global environment variable, a local environment variable, and then just a shell variable. So let's get into that. I'm in my um, shell right now, and to set one of these variables, I can just name it something and then set it equal. So my underscore var, usually they're all capitalized, just kind of common syntax that you'd see, um, equals some value. And so if I press enter, it's going to set the my var um, variable in the shell. But what actually is this variable? This is what we would call a shell variable because if we ran a script, so for example, if I touch, um, if I create a new script, so um, environment script example.sh, and let's make this executable. Notice I can just do the plus x. We talked about permissioning already, but you can do plus x or you could do something like 775 or 755, either of those would work for this. Okay, so it's an executable script. Let's go in there and edit that. Give it the nice shebang at the top. And then if we wanted to use our variable, so um, maybe we want to echo my variable. Man, can't type. Um, and this is how you would reference any variable in a script is by putting that little dollar sign in front. So what we would expect this script to do is echo out, um, I actually spelled it my var, let me fix that real quick. Need to reference it correctly, so my var. And if I execute this script, so execute the script, you would expect that it's going to print some value since that's what I set this to. But you don't see anything. And that's because we, when we set this variable up top, this is actually called a shell variable, which means any script that is using the current bash shell is not gonna have access to it. Now in the shell, we could type dollar sign my var uh, actually, we need, we can't just do that. We need to echo my var, and now we get some value successfully. So that's because we're within the shell, but if you put it in a script, that's not made available. If we wanted to make that variable available to our script, we would just export it. So my var, and we exported it. Now let's try to run the script, and you can see that it gets some value correctly. Now, that is what we call a local environment variable. So we started off with a shell variable at the top, and then when we exported it down here, it turned it into a local environment variable, which means that any script we run in the current session is going to be able to access this particular variable. Now when we take um, when we close this window, so if I were to close this and reopen a terminal, let me just go ahead and do that real quick. So we, we get close it out, open up a new terminal, and now you'd expect, okay, we can echo out my var. But it does not work, and that is because we put it in the dot .profile file, which only runs for a login shell, and as we um, as we remember, this is not enabled by default when I close and reopen my shell. So I would actually have to source the profile and then I can echo my var. So that's just um, kind of a test in your understanding of the login, non-login shell thing. Um, and also kind of explains the difference between a local and a global environment variable. So at this point, we should be able to execute um, the environment script example and it's going to print out some value because it now has access to this global environment variable. If you want to see all of the global environment, or 
actually not all the global, this would be all the environment variables, whether it's local or global, you can just type env. And it's going to print out a bunch of things. Um, a lot of this stuff I didn't even set. For example, like these two right here, pwd and home, these are just set by default as your profile. Um, but there's one here that I want to look at and we're gonna talk a little bit more about, and that is the path. So this is something that when you first start coding or um, learning the bash shell, it's not really all that intuitive to understand what this path variable is. And people kind of refer to it as like, oh yeah, just edit your path and update your path and put it in your path. And it's like, what is a path in the first place? So um, to understand what this path is, it's, it's essentially kind of like a default bash um, environment variable and it's separated by these little colons that basically tells the shell where to look, what directories to look in for different executable scripts. So, for example, when I, you know, type pwd or cp um, or any of these like bash commands, um, it's going to actually get these from, I believe, user bin. Um, let's see. No, hold on pwdx okay never mind okay so it's going to look in bin and so for example if we were looking for the cat command to like print out the contents of a file if we type ca in bin and then press tab it's going to auto complete it to cat because that is where cat exists but the computer the bash shell does not know this by default it only knows that the cat um, executable exists in slash bin because we've already put um, in our path, we've put slash bin somewhere. So right here, we have slash bin. So it's first when we run the cat command. So if I type in the normal terminal, CA and then um, complete, and it's gonna give me some, op some options, you can see that it found cat. And when I try to run that, so if I wanna print um, the script we just wrote, What's going to happen when I press enter is it's going to look, the bash shell is going to look in the path to see if it can find this cat command in any of these directories. So it's first going to look in home Zach, it's not going to find it, or home Zach local bin, it's not going to find it there. Uh, then it's going to look in home Zach.nvm, that's like a node version manager, don't worry about that. Uh, then it's going to look in um, home Zach local bin again because for some reason I have that set twice um, I probably should update that then it's gonna look in user local s bin not gonna find it there user local bin not gonna find it there user s bin and then finally it comes to user bin and it says oh I found the cat command let me just use that so that's kind of how the path works it's going to look from left to right so knowing this we can actually set our own scripts. So for example, I'm in the home Zach uh, or my home directory. And if I wanted to make a custom bin directory, so like where I put all my custom scripts, I could just say like, you wouldn't normally call it this, you'd probably just call it like bin or something, but we're gonna say custom bin and we just created that directory. And then what we're going to do is um, let's go ahead and move the env script example.sh to custom bin. And I'm just going to call it um, env script just for short. And that's going to move that script into my custom bin. So right now, you can see that it no longer exists in my home directory. And if I try to type env or if I try to execute um, env script, it's going to say commands not found. That's because we don't have this custom bin in our path yet. So if we wanted to put that in our path, we go to our profile. As I said, this is where I recommend that you put it. You could also put it in bash RC or even like bash profile if you wanted. Um, but this is where I recommend you put it based on the setup that we went over. And now what I wanna do is down here somewhere, I want to say export path equals, and then I can either put this new custom directory at the beginning of the path or at the end of the path. And I'm just going to put it at the end because um, 
you know, it, it doesn't really matter. It's more if you have like conflicting um, paths here. So I'm just going to say home Zach custom scripts. And what that's going to do is it's going to take the existing path and then append this new path to it and set that as the effective path variable. Let me make sure that I got that right. Um, okay, I totally botched that. Uh, it is actually custom bin. Okay, not custom scripts. We want custom bin. Okay, and then we source our profile so that that comes into effect. And then finally, let's just clear the page. And now we can uh, run the env, let's see, uh, script. Nope, not env script. I can't remember what's going on here. Um, okay, env underscore script. And it's going to print some value because it searched through the path. It found the env underscore script sitting in my custom bin directory and it executed the contents of the script. Hopefully this is a nice little introduction to um, the, the concept of environment variables and specifically the path environment variable. The last thing that we'll touch on is the concept of aliases. The concept of aliases is very simple if you understand the previous stuff that we just talked about. The only difference is instead of export, you know, my var equals, we're just going to say alias. So replace export with alias and then give it whatever you want your alias to be called. So we could just call it um, print something equals and then you give it a command that you want it to execute. So I'll just say echo and we'll say this is an alias and enter. So now we have set the alias in this current um, environment. This is actually a local alias. If you wanted to make it permanent, put that exact same line that you see in your dot profile file. But for now, we can print something and it says this is an alias. So that's useful for um, a host of things. If you have a lot of like kind of longer commands that you type consistently, um, you can just put it in an alias and shorten it. One that I do that's kind of useful is sometimes you have to SSH into a um, a virtual machine or a remote machine somewhere and you have like some long IP address. And so the command looks something like this. So what I would do um, in my profile is put the actual IP address and just set an alias. So log in to uh, remote equals and then set this script right here. So now all I would have to do once I actually re replace the IP address with the correct one is type login to remote and I'm logged into my virtual machine. So that's kind of a useful um, application of aliases.